Let's go over the parts you'll need to build the BP synth. As mentioned in the intro video, the microcontroller we will be using to build our synthesizer with is commonly known as a black pill development board. The black pill is not to be mistaken for another popular board called the blue pill board with a similar microcontroller. The black pill board has a much more powerful chip on it for our synthesizer's processing needs. There are two black pill boards out there. One has a STM32F401 chip and the other a STM32F411. The one we will need has a STM32F411 microcontroller on it. This microcontroller clocks at 100 MHz, has 512 k of flash memory, and 128 k of RAM. We have two different digital analog converter modules we can choose from. The DAC seen in the intro video is this UDA1334A. In other videos of mine, you may also see this PCM5102A DAC module used. Both DAC modules hook up to the microcontroller exactly the same way using three data connections. Bit clock, word select, and data in. We will also need to connect two power wires. The PCM5102A will require one extra wire to connect the S-clock terminal to ground. The UDA1334A comes with S-clock already grounded on the printed circuit board. Both DAC boards have low noise stereo output, have preamps built in, and provide a 3.5 millimeter jack to make connecting it to an amplifier very simple. They will process 16-bit samples at 32 kilohertz. This choice of sample resolution and speed helps us balance out the microcontroller's audio streaming duties along with the heavy digital signal processing math computation that we will require the microcontroller to perform. Either board used will require a set of header pins to be soldered on. If you have never soldered before, I highly recommend you either do some practice soldering prior to soldering them to the boards, or find a friend who has experience in soldering to do it for you. For a MIDI interface, we require a 6N137 optocoupler, a 220 ohm and a 10 kilo ohm resistor, a small switching diode such as the 1N4148 or 1N4007, a few 22 gauge wires, and a 5 pin DIN connector to plug a MIDI cable into. You will also need a breadboard to place the parts on. A simple plastic hobby breadboard will usually do fine, but there are many cheap breadboards out there that can give you issues with poor connections. Therefore, I'd recommend checking into buying a quality breadboard known as the BB830 breadboard made by Busboard Prototype Systems, which you can find on Amazon for about $9. Use name brand breadboards like Heathkit, Jameco, and Archer from eBay should work well too. I use these older Jameco breadboards quite often without any issues. And of course, you'll need some jumper wires as well. I would avoid using the cheap round rubberized into jumpers. I've had many issues with them and found them to be very unreliable when they suddenly stop conducting on either end. Use straight solid wires whenever you possibly can. If you use stranded wire, be sure to tin the ends of the wires with solder so they don't fray when you push them into the breadboard. There are two ways you can flash code to the microcontroller. One is simply to use a ST program called Defuse that will allow you to directly use a standard USB-C cable and a pre-converted code file. Using the USB-C cable to upload code will require that the microcontroller be removed from the circuit prior to flashing. So this may not be the best way to go later on if you experiment with the code. The second way, which is the best way to flash the code in, is by using a ST-Link dongle and the ST-Link utility app. 
This method not only allows you to upload the code, but it will allow you to upload compiled code files immediately while still in the circuit and without converting them for use with defuse first. You will find links in the description below to download the required apps and files. I have provided zip files that will either have all the apps needed to upload the code, the code file itself, and the GUI app, or just the code file itself and the GUI app if you wish to download the ST apps from the ST sites instead. You will have to register on the ST site prior to downloading any apps from there. If you don't see the links, you may need to click More to see them. Where is the best place to buy the parts? I would highly recommend checking out AliExpress. They are going to be your best value, and if you select AliExpress Shipping, you will likely get the parts within two weeks. In fact, I do not recommend using anything but AliExpress Shipping. All of the economy shipping options will likely take two to three months to get your order. When shopping, I recommend trying to find one or two sellers that have most of the parts you need. Usually, they will combine shipping to save you shipping costs. For example, if I buy the Black Pill, DAC, and ST Link dongle, all from Atexum Robot Official Store, and select AliExpress shipping for all items, I will only be charged $2.32 one time for my shipping, and my total will be $14.77. Atexum Robot also has diodes, resistors, jumper wires, and many other parts if you are also in need of them as well. Unfortunately, you will probably have to buy the 6N137IC separately, and they typically are best bought in a lot of tin like Fantasy Electronics has to offer. The 5-pin MIDI jack can be bought in a pack of tin for around $6. Other options are to buy one of those 3.5 mm phone jack adapter MIDI cables for $5 like they sell at Sweetwater and use one of these breadboard ready 3.5 mm jacks so you can hook up a MIDI cable to the BP synth. In the next video, we will go over how to build the BP synth. Please keep in mind that some of the footage is reused from over a year ago when I first started this project, so video and audio quality may not be the greatest. You will also notice dates at the bottom of the screen indicating just how long ago it was. When I first began this project, I had a lot of time on my hands due to the pandemic and a job that was not providing me many hours to work. Well now the pandemic is nearly over and I have a new job where I work many long hours. So my free time is very limited to work on the project anymore. So don't be surprised to see variations in the quality of the videos. It has taken a lot of dedicated time to learn how to use video editors and a little extra investment in equipment to help improve them. See you in the next video.